What's up challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo and this is the GBA Season 8 Week 10 episode of The Locker Room. The San Francisco Giantes are team building for the Kansas City Girard Chiefs and their coach Jolt. Love Jolt, love that guy. Um, has been very uh, easy to coordinate with, um, very forgiving. Great conversations with that guy and want to give a pre-shout out to... Um, uh, my, my Mr. MV for helping me team build, uh, as well as uh, Tom and uh, Turbo, who have given me some great ideas, great set talk. Like I, I felt, I'm gonna get into why I sought out the extra help this week, and I do appreciate because I know a lot of you have also reached out to me, a lot of fans to offer help, and I do want to say I, I do appreciate all of that. Um, it's hard for me to accept help sometimes. I decided to do it here because his this matchup is not going to be good. Uh, I I've, <laughs> I have uh, have played what is it six practice matches this week, uh, trying to get ready for this, and tried so many different teams. And I swear, every time I build a new set, I'm looking at the finished product, and then I look at his team, and I'm like. Check, 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 and counter. Like I, like it's it's that bad. Uh, I'm looking at speed tiers, guys, and he's got the fastest mon on the court with Aerodactyl beating out my Rabombi. More than one dark type, and I don't do well against dark types. Um, though I don't, I mean, he's not realistically gonna bring both, but like you know, I, he does, he does have that option. He's got amazing defensive checks to some of my offensive mons. I struggle against some of his best offensive mons. Our defensive mons are don't really do much, but his don't invite me to turn into an offensive momentum, whereas mine do, invent, do invite offensive momentum out of him. But you know what? Let's go into his team. You can see those 11 Pokemon right up there. He has drafted the Hydreigon, the Celesteela, the Gardevoir, Arcanine, Seismitoad, Breloom, Mega Venusaur, Persian, Alolan Form, Durant, Rotom, and Aerodactyl. Uh, and the Mons I am bringing this week, you can see right over there, are the Mew, the Shaman, the Archaeops, Doug Trio, Blacephalon, and Haxorus. So let's talk about why I have the six. No, let's talk about his 11 first, and I'll kind of segue that into why I brought the ones that I brought. Hydreigon and Celesteela are coming. You guys know how I do with this tiering situation. They are coming. There is no way they don't. I have almost nothing that can reliably switch into Hydreigon. The coverage moves it provides means my safest thing against it is a defensive Toxapex who can get annihilated by Earth Power. Um, the thing outspeeds my Haxorus by one point, so he can speed creep that. So even if I'm Dragon Danced, his Scarf one will be able to counter it. Like it's it's so bad. Um, it's it stops some of my best offensive potential Pokemon being Haxorus, Mew, Blacephalon, and Scizor, and just like Shaman doesn't do great against it. Just wow, guys! Honestly, it's like it's very good against me. Celesteela is just annoying. Uh, my best way to take it out is uh, our Mons that, despite having super effective stab for it are still at risk and, and like resisting it are still at risk themselves things like Blacephalon, um Rotom is just not bulky enough to take repeated hits from it and it can do weird setup situations against it with substitute leech seed to whittle it down uh so it's a struggle there mm, just um honestly it's a good mon also Gardevoir the issue there is that it's such a good switch into Mew um, and has coverage that is very difficult for my team. You think like it, it can have Shadow Ball for Mew, it can have Fire Coverage for Shaman, um, it can uh, Moon Blast hits very hard, takes out the uh, Blacephalon and the Haxorus. Um, just. It, Especially defensively, it kind of checks a few things. Uh, the Trace makes it very good switch into the Toxapex, so I think it's a likely bring. The Arcanine and the Seismitoad. I have them there because I think they are solid defensive 
um, options for him. The Seismitoad's a good rock setter. Uh, in my opinion, better than the uh, the Aerodactyl, which is why I put the Aerodactyl low, because I don't imagine he'd bring both, and if he's going to bring one, he's not going to bring the other, and I think Seismitoad's a more likely bring. The Arcanine actually, um, while it is a decent defensive switch in to the likes of potentially Shaman and Blacephalon, uh, and... Um, getting the Intimidate off against the Haxorus or any of my other physical mons could be good. I actually think it'll it's likely to come because of its uh, possible offensive potential, because with Wild Charge, Banded Set can take out the Toxapex. Uh, I don't have basically any other really good switch-ins to its um, Flare Blitz from a Banded Set. Extreme Speed is obviously great to clean up if you... Managed to chip away at something that's set up. Uh, he has good priority in other things as well. Uh, the Breloom and the Mega Venusaur. Maybe I should switch those things around, but I'm too lazy to do it. <laughs> too lazy to do it. I think one of them comes. I don't think he needs that many grass types. Grass is not particularly good against my team, but like offensively, but defensively, it's it's decent. Uh, I think the Mega Venusaur comes because it's a great switch into the Shaman, uh, which I've been bringing recently. Uh, I think it provides good all-around coverage. Um, and yeah, just defensively, offensive potential uh, with the knockoff to take advantage of Mew, the Earthquake potentially for the Toxapex. I think it's a good bring. Uh, Breloom, of course, could have it, could spore. Um, so, Focus Punch, whatever. Like, I mean, Breloom can do quite a lot of things, it's very powerful. The Persian, um, I have it lower because I think he's already bringing one dark type. He could bring two. I don't think he will. I hope he doesn't. I mean, here's the thing. When I was team building, I didn't think much of the Persian, but it is it is a good bring. Um, it, it honestly is, and I wish I would have prepped a little bit more for it, but it's kind of late for that now because I've been keeping Jolt waiting for a little bit, and I need to get my team gen in just a second. Uh, the Durant, another thing I didn't super prep for, um, that's not great against my team because it can't break Toxapex uh, and Scizor also uh, I'm not really a big threat about, um, but its speed tier is very good. It's 109, which again, just barely outspeeds Blissephalon. Uh, these speed tiers, man, it's so, so bad. The Persian outspeeds the Archaeops. The Durant outspeeds the Blacephalon. The Hydreigon outspeeds the Haxorus. The Rotom outspeeds my Rotom. Uh, he's got two uh, base 80 Mons that are, uh, you know, gonna outspeed my Mega Scizor. Just the frustrating, right? Just frustrating. So um, Durant is possible for that, and against the team that I brought. Could do really, really well. And then there's the... But I but I don't think it's going to come because Celesteel is coming in. I, I don't think he wants to make himself too fire weak. Uh, Jolt usually builds teams that are pretty well balanced uh, with effectiveness-wise and having answers to things. And I don't think he would overstep his fire weakness boundaries. Uh, Rotom, I, I really don't think is coming. Uh, does have defog option. But I, I just don't... I don't see it as a likely bring. And then the Aerodactyl offensively doesn't do much um, and I think there's a better option for him for rocks so um, I mean gen 4 is a suicide lead so he might have a suicide lead option but I, I just don't see it as being super likely as a bring not that it could I mean this is the one thing I, I I'm talking about tiering it because this goes into my thought process of building the team which I'm about to talk about but the big issue with this is anything guys like anything on that roster except for probably the rotom which means that i should have put the rotom last but remember it's by tiers not about their exact position uh, other than the rotom i think literally any of those mon could come and could give me a big problem depending on the other pokemon he brings i really honestly truly believe that i'll kind of go into that a little bit uh, so let's have a look at more in depth uh, the team here we've got home or the mew tefiti the um I did not bring Sandvale on this dick down, guys. Sorry. I brought Arena Trap. Um, we've got uh, Tefiti, the Shaman, Dig Dug, the Dug Trio, Big Burb, the Archaeops, Toys R Us, the Haxorus, and Head Go Boom, the Blacephalon. I am going hyper offensive with this team this week, guys, because 
Uh, I tried a few practice matches defensively, and every time one of my defensive mon came in, something took advantage of it, no matter what I tried to do. So, uh, I figure I have offensive threats that can sweep and win if I remove potential answers to that. So, let me kind of talk uh, a little bit of strategy here and kind of go into what. So I'm starting on Dig Dug here. As you can see, Earthquake, Final Gambit, Memento, Stealth Rock. Uh, I, in almost no circumstances, literally, I, I, I don't see where I click Earthquake against anyone on his team. I truly don't see it, uh, but it's there just because I need to have something. Uh, Final Gambit, Memento, and Stealth Rock with Focus Sash. This thing outspeeds everything except his Aerodactyl, which again, I don't super think he's going to bring. So uh, I click Stealth Rock first turn. If I'm at full HP, I final Gambit. If I get brought down to Sash, I Memento. Probably as simple as that. Uh, it provides me significant options for removing a threat. He has quite a lot of bulk on his team, but fully HP invested Dig Dug can still either put massive hurt on some things or literally take out uh, offensive mons. So once I get stealth rocks up, I'm basically just going to either final gambit or memento into uh, a setup mon or something that can kind of like push the button there after. So uh, that's the dig dug set. It's pretty simple. Looking at his team, I don't know that there's a lead option that Doug trio becomes the wrong answer for me. I want to get rocks up. I want to put a hurt on something with final gambit or i want to set up my opportunity to sweep uh, by clicking memento uh, and so let's get into some of my setup mons shall we home yowner first dazzling gleam fire blast uh rock polish nasty plot with a colber berry enough speed to outspeed a hydreigon let's talk uh, obviously you see it does not have psychic a big reason for that the things on his team that I would click Psychic against are two Grass types, uh, so Fire Blast is fine. Obviously, Thick Fat on the Mega Venusaur means that the Fire Blast is not super effective. That still doesn't matter to me because it will do fine, and I don't think that the Mega Venusaur is powerful enough to truly threaten me, especially given that I have Colberberry to reduce the power of knockoff twice in theory because the first time when it would do full damage it uh, does less because of the colber and then I don't have an item so it does less again. So uh, there's that. Uh, I think in the right circumstances if I can get a rock polish up I guarantee that I outspeed the Hydreigon. If I can get a nasty plot off thereafter then Dazzling Gleam and Fire Blast do very well or well enough coverage against his team. Mew's not looking to win a game here. It's not. It's looking to remove something that thinks it would otherwise beat me, uh, like the Hydreigon. Uh, a Scarfed Hydreigon, for example, is uh, risky for Mew, is a problem for Mew. And um, being able to nasty plot up against something and then break it that thinks it might uh, otherwise take me on would also be very beneficial for me. So that's kind of the set I'm going for there. Um, what I really hope is that this baits in the Hydreigon, that I kill the Hydreigon, and then I can potentially sweep um, with the Head Go Boom. Uh, I'll get to that in a little bit because I want to talk about kind of the other things. Tefiti baits in the Celesteela, and I'm running Blackberry, Blackberry, Seed Bomb, Natural Gift, Dazzling Gleam, Swords Dance. Um, Dazzling Gleam is sort of a, this is a little bit of a last minute change. Obviously, Seed Bomb is my primary stab that does well um, against the Gardevoir. It obviously takes out the Seismitoad, uh, and it's neutral against several other Mon, like the Rotom and the um, Aerodactyl, and the. Uh, it's pretty safe against the Persian. Yeah, or maybe not because of uh, foul play, but we'll see. Uh, and Swords Dance, obviously what I can do is Swords Dance on the very obvious Celesteela switch in. Uh, and then I can pop off a natural gift to, depending on its set, either kill it or severely hamper it. I'm predicting that it's a sub leech seed set just because it can be and it's a very difficult set to deal with. 
So really that's kind of what I do with Defeaty. It's a great way for me to weaken or kill the Celestila. Pop off the Swords Dance, pop off the Natural Gift, get that kill, uh, and then maybe just see what else I can hurt um, thereafter. It, again, it's not going for a sweep here. Big Burb is looking to um, potentially win late game. Uh, again, it outspeeds. It's 166. A lot of my mono 166 because they aren't able to outspeed the Durant, but they do outspeed the Hydreigon. So um, I'm running Power Herb, Sky Attack, Acrobatics, Hone, Claw, Stone Edge, Sky Attack. Obviously, with the really high power, Power Herb uh, can potentially get crits, can potentially flinch, maybe take something out with that. Then I can either Stone Edge uh, till I'm dead or just acrobatic something. So that's kind of the idea with Big Burb. It's great uh, potential options for me versus the Mega Venusaur. It's a great way to take out Mega Venusaur. It's a great way. Uh, I can, on some sets of Celesteel, if I determine that it's a sub Leech Seed set and that it doesn't have Heavy Slam, it's actually very good against Celesteela. I can pop off a Hone Claws, even if it does whittle me into Defeatus, I can still two-hit KO it with Stone Edge at that point, which won't be missing. Um, so really just looking to, like a lot of my Mon are just get in, hit super hard, take a life, and then set up, break down his core. If I can remove a few of those threats, something else can win. Uh, that's what Big Burb and Defeaty really are. With a setup Swords Dance Tefiti, you can take out something. You can take out that Celesteela. Big Burb, pop off a Sky Attack. He doesn't have great answers for it. One of them is Celesteela. If we've removed Celesteela, take another life. You know what I mean? It's something like that. Uh, the things that outspeed uh, Archaeops, Big Burb, are um, Aerodactyl and Persian. Persian's not going to be killing me, and I can potentially kill it with a Power Herb Sky Attack, depending on the set. Aerodactyl will kind of, you know, trade stone edges or something like that. Um, these are kind of last uh, late game sweepers for me. The Haxorus is Phytinium Z, Dragon Claw, Poison Jab, Superpower, Dragon Dance. If I can get uh, a Dragon Dance up, I do have the potential to beat his entire team, with the exception that if it is a Scarfed Hydreigon, um, It'll outspeed me by one if it speed creeps me. So uh, I didn't do that. I went to 162 instead, which outspeeds a Adamant Durant or a Jolly Arcanine. Uh, since I can't outspeed the Hydra Gun, no point in fully investing. Put those 12 extra points into HP. Uh, this is this is good. Uh, getting a Dragon Dance up and then not speeding everything. Dragon Claw can take on a majority of his team. I don't have Earthquake, so the Arcanine is potentially a switch in option here. Um, and then I can potentially go Big Burb on a f if he's just going to click like Flare Blitz because he thinks something else is an answer like Mew. Um, kind of got options there. Also, Dragon Claw, uh, I could. Z superpower uh, for all out pummeling that might do the trick as well. But you know, I'm not just gonna like switch in here. I'm gonna try and bait and kill the Arcanine as well, and uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, and then head go boom is really in my practice matches. I, I may have mentioned. I can't remember if I mentioned already. We're already going on me forgetting things here. Head go boom won me the only game I won in my six spars and it was with a team that is not this team it's a team that I slightly changed and I'll kind of tell you what the team that I originally built that won that game was head go boom is running fire blast shadow ball hidden power grass fling the reason for uh, hidden power grass is obviously seismitoad um, I can survive a scald or an earth power or an earthquake from it if it's not uh, offensively invested and kill it through Rindo after a second Hidden Power Grass. Uh, potentially get my Beast Boost up on that. Fling Light Ball is because I think a really good switch into this is Hydreigon and it would be great to paralyze it. So I click Fling and if it's Scarfed it's no longer an issue. I can obviously I may have to sack something to it because it's just that beast but I can then possibly set up on it um, maybe take it out and not have to worry about it quite so much. Um, so obviously once again, because it does not outspeed the thing that's faster than Hydreigon, I just set it to outspeed Hydreigon. Uh, 166 there, and we are good to go. 
Fire Blast, Shadow Ball, Hidden Power Grass um, can potentially beat the rest of his team once Hydreigon is gone. Uh, it really just does fine. I have Fire for Celesteela, I have Ghost for the um, Gardevoir. Uh, I have Ghost for the Arcanine's neutral, it'll be fine. Hidden Power Grass for the Seismitoad. Um, Fire Blast for the next two. Fire Blast for the next one. Fire Blast for the next one. Fire Blast for the next one. Uh, Shadow Ball for the... Um, Aerodactyl, but I don't think it's coming. Uh, this is how I won the game last time uh, in the one practice match I did. Uh, I took out the Hydreigon gently checked a few other things with the Mew and then came in with Blacephalon and won the game because it outsped the rest of what was left in, in the practice match. But one of the things I did bring, I, I literally had just lost badly five practice matches and I was like, I'm so sick of this. I'm going crazy. And I brought double boom. I put explosion on the Mew. Uh, the Mew set was um, explosion with normal gem. Drain Punch, Rock Polish, Swords Dance. And the idea there was, um, if I'm in against the Seismitoad, maybe I lead and it's a Seismitoad lead or something. Like, I'm clicking, um, uh, maybe, <laughs> I, I, maybe I'm clicking, uh, Rock Polish, uh, and then if the Hydreigon switch, hard switches in, I'm just booming on it and just killing it right away. If he chooses to set up rocks, then I'm clicking Swords Dance, and then if he switches into Hydreigon, I'm clicking Drain Punch, and, um, and then I'm taking that thing out, and then I'm booming on something else, and forget about it, Mew's getting two kills. And then Head Go Boom was also normal gem explosion, and literally, like, just watching those things go down. And um, I changed that because the Mew set's a little bit more compelling this way uh it can just get up a rock polish uh, against most things it's bulky enough that I, he doesn't really have a fantastic way to oko it even a scarfed hydreigon won't oko me um and i mentioned before why i don't have the psychic because i don't imagine he's switching in those threats against me and until he sees all four of my moves uh, they're they're not safe anyway so um basically that i made that switch but that's what the team's looking like guys uh give me some love or conversation in the comment section down below um do you see anything i don't see because i'm i gotta be honest guys this this is after multiple times of looking at you know what's a really good answer for this this pokemon playing with it and realizing nope this is not working toxapex is one of those um uh things that looks like it's good against a lot of his pokemon but just gives too much opportunity to one or two it's just it's a free switch in for the Gardevoir. I don't want to give a free switch into the Gardevoir. It's a free switch into the Celesteela. Don't want to give a free switch into the Celesteela. Doesn't super threaten the Hydreigon. Don't want to give a free switch into the Hydreigon. Um, and the Arcanine can beat it too. The Arcanine can beat it. So I thought no to that. Mega Scizor. Couldn't. Just too many things that either wall it. Don't care about it. Don't give me the momentum option or just oko it with fire coverage <sighs> what else uh definitely did not work for me rabombi wasn't killing anything rotom fan c was a potential bring over the doug trio uh, i decided rocks might be a little more helpful the ditto too many things that don't beat themselves celesteela gardevoir um it's good versus the Arcanine in theory to get an Intimidate off on it, but I have other ways of dealing with that. Seismitoad, whatever, what are they going to do to each other? Um, not really great versus the Breloom. Not awful versus the Mega Venusaur. Uh, it's fine, good against the Persian, fine against the Durant. Doesn't really do much uh, against the Rotom Spook. And uh, I already have a, f <laughs> a rock flying type, so I, I couldn't bring the ditto either. You're kind of seeing the point I'm getting at here. Like, my other mons, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I don't really know what you do. Um, if you're trying to be a defensive mon, you're not be you're not succeeding at being a defensive mon. 
Uh, so I brought what I consider to be the best offensive options I can bring, and almost all of them are sets designed to beat the one thing that they're supposed to lose to. And if they succeed in doing that, the thing they're supposed to lose to that also beats quite a few members of my team is now gone. So I'm really, this is how I win. Break down the one or two things that stop Head Go Boom or Toys R Us from winning. Um, I'm not going to make the mistake this week of the mistake I made last week, which is I sit on these two Pokemon because they are win conditions until the very end when it's the only two of them left and I've lost my opportunity. I have lost games doing that this season multiple times. Um, I need to push the button with something and it's not always going to be my mid game mons homiano tafiti and big burb it might be toys r us it might be head go boom it kind of depends what he brings and how i can set myself up to win so uh that's the that's the thought this week guys that's uh, everything that's in my head really truly not gonna lie to you uh, i did not like having to team build for this this is possibly one of the worst matchups i have ever seen on paper for me personally um in my how many seasons this is my fourth this is my fifth season in the gba this is my fifth season in the gba and i have never in my time here felt more worse in a matchup so we're going crazy this is a this is a nutso team oh i didn't even mention did i mention the fling light ball i hope i did in case you don't know flinging a light ball paralyzes something so <laughs> Uh, paralyzing the... I think I did mention, I think I said I wanted to paralyze the Hydreigon, which is a good switch into the Blacephalon. So, honestly, I'm flinging light bulbs, uh, light balls, I'm, I'm power herbing sky attacks, uh, I'm, I'm setting up with anything and everything that I can, I'm final gambiting, I'm doing weird things that honestly aren't even the best options for some of these things on paper, but I'm doing them because I gotta trip up Jolt, because if he plays safe, he wins. So I need to remove his ability to do that, and in order to do that, I need to break something fast. Uh, uh, break one of the key walling threats to any of my potential other mons, and hope I win the speed tier game afterwards, because the only thing he's got that beats that 166 is Durant, Persian, and Aerodactyl. That's it. So that is my game plan. Let me know what you're thinking about my matchup this week in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys next time. Tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow.